I'll provide my commentary and first impressions of the first 15 minutes of Pokemon Pocket. Genetic Apex is the first expansion of Pokemon Pocket. You see here we open it and we get a Bulbasaur, a Shelder, a Dratini, a Sand Slash, and my first Marowak EX card of Pokemon Pocket. You'll notice that the rarity appears at the bottom. You'll see we got a 4 Diamond Silver card with the Marowak. Uh, the other ones that you'd be looking for are the Gold Stars. Those are the rarest of the Genetic Apex and the ones that offer the highest reward. As you progress through the game, you'll complete missions. These missions offer a new kind of currency that could be used in the shop. Now, one thing that was really confusing for me is that there are multiple kinds of currencies as you'll see throughout this video. There's currencies for the premium pack, there's currencies for pack points. It just keeps going on and on and even now I'm really confused. Now, this is just a video explaining my experience, but if you guys want more information on this, please let me know in the comments and I'll be sure to do a little bit more research and get back to you guys with everything to know about Pokemon Pocket. And we're back with another genetic apex, this time with the Dragonite, three Silver Diamond, a Tyanimo, a Mincino, a Tentacool, and a Porygon to end it off. This will be the first level up from one to two. You see we get a few rewards, Hourglass, Watches, and Golds, and then I'll explain those a little bit later. But we also get the option to do Wonder Picks. Wonder Picks is an option that allows you to select one out of a possible five cards in a random game of chance. These are recreations of packs opened by other players. You'll see here that someone had pulled a Bulbasaur Illustration Rare. I don't know what you call them in Pokemon Pocket, but we'll call them an Illustration Rare until I figure out what it actually means. What will happen is these five cards will be flipped over and I'll have the chance to get the Bulbasaur. I have one pick. Let's see if I can do it. Now, I was going to select the middle one, but instead, in a last minute decision, I go with the far left top, and of course, it becomes the Bulbasaur, and that is a gold star card, my first gold star collected in Pokemon Pocket. You'll notice for Genetic Apex, they have the total number of cards of 226, but they also have your total collection of the star cards, so the alt arts, like Bulbasaur here. And the theme of the, the first 15 minutes of Pokemon Pocket is they just keep blasting you with potential packs. They really want you to fall in love with the idea of ripping these packs open and building your collection because ultimately at the end, they want you to get the premium. And we'll look into the premium here a little bit shortly, but we get a Go-Goat, a Persian with the Mouth earlier, another Mincino, and a Bruxish. So not the greatest pack, but stay tuned. We get a really big card in my first go at Pokemon Pocket. That'll bring my total collection to 16 cards. They also provide a little fun fact at the bottom. Did you know Dragonite can fly the globe in just 16 hours? That's pretty cool. The fun doesn't stop there because yes, we get more packs. Let's try our hand at a Charizard genetic apex. Let's see what we get here. By the way, the ripping is actually really cool. It's fun. I like it. I like the feel of it. Staryu, Lilligant, Golit, and we get the Charizard card in the Charizard pack. I like that. Alright guys, so I did mention that there are multiple currencies in this game. Yes, here's one of the other ones. It is the Hourglass. Pokemon Pocket is set up so that you could open packs after a certain amount of time, usually 12 hours, or stamina. The stamina can be reduced by using the Hourglasses, one of the other currencies. I'm all out of packs for the day, but this is a great time to announce that you could open up more packs, an extra pack a day, if you buy the premium pass. That being said, they do give you 12 hourglasses so you can reduce the stamina and open up another pack. There you go. So what, that's our fourth pack in the first 10 minutes, I'd say? All right, let's see what we get in this Charizard one. We have a Mawile, a Slowpoke. We get our first full art Slowpoke. That is a one gold star card, a Ponyard, a Redata, a Bisharp, and that is it. But yeah, look at that, that beautiful Slowpoke. The art is really nice in this Pokemon Pocket, I do have to admit. That's been kind of a theme recently. I think uh, even with the re recent releases of Stellar Crown, as well as Surging Sparks, we've seen some magnificent art. I'm glad this continues into Pokemon Pocket and hopefully we get some of these arts in the TCG one day. 
we'll take the next moment to go through some of the missions that we just completed. We got a couple of booster packs opened and we get hourglasses. Once again, hourglasses will allow us to reduce the amount of time to open up another pack. Some of the challenges you might expect would be reaching a certain level, opening a number of packs, at least for the beginner, but there's also daily quests. There's decks, so reaching a certain number of cards for your specific expansions. There's also ones that I think are pretty cool, and those are the theme collections. It also gave me some really good ideas for future collections for my own physical trading card game. Look at that, the Viridian Forest, uh, we have the Pidgeys, we have themed gym leader decks, we have legendary trios. Look at that, we also have the Nidoran line, female and male. Oh, and a Snorlax one. I like this idea because it's Snorlax as one card, but you also have Oddish and Bellsprout and a couple of other ones where Snorlax and his big belly is featured just in a small part of the art. How about the idea of a fossil collection? That's pretty cool. Maybe something you guys have thought about before, but maybe worth collecting. Perhaps getting that Aerodactyl from, what is it, Lost Origin, I believe? That would be a pretty, pretty good start. Okay, so let's go back to the shop here. Let's check this out. Yes, we have these currency. I honestly have no idea. Um, I haven't, I only have one, some kind of coupon or tickets. Like, how do you get these? There's so many different currencies. There's the tickets. We have gold. Okay, so you can buy gold, but what do you use the gold for? My guess, just from exploring the app a little bit further, was that you could use gold to, of course, get other currencies, such as the hourglass. Ultimately, in the end, you want to buy more packs. So buy more gold, get more packs. There's also stuff you could get for your accounts, like emblems, icons, and such. I didn't go into my own personal account, but maybe I'll do that in another episode. All right, so the premium. When you get a premium, you get two major things. One, you get an extra pack a day, and two, you get special premium challenges that allow you to get these new currency, these premium currency that allows you to buy, like I said, icons and such, but also promo cards. There's like a little promo card collection. I did end up purchasing the premium because for two weeks you get it for free. Just make sure that you guys note the day where it becomes paid for. That way, if you want to remove it and not have to pay, then you could just delete it. I opened another pack here and get a three diamond Dragonite. It honestly kind of looks like a reverse hollow, which makes me think that there's different versions of the same Pokemon. Actually, I know there are different versions because one of the challenges was like get multiple Mewtwo's. So you have different varieties of Pokemon. Let's open another pack here. All right, a Venonet, a Woobat, we get a Golduck, we get a Helioctyl, we get a Lickitung. For this next part, I'm going to do another Wonder Pick. If you guys remember, I got a Bulbasaur in the last one. It's where you have a 1 in 5 chance to pick the card that you're looking for. Classic children's game. Let's look through this. So now that we have the option available to us, we can look through and pick the one that we want. These are packs that someone had previously opened and you get the chance to get one of the cards from that pack. You do have wonder pick points. You can see them at the top. I have five of them right now. And you can see that each one has a different cost. I'm picking one that cost three wonder points because it includes an illustration rare ditto. I must have a horseshoe up my butt because I get the card I want again, the illustration rare ditto. That's a one in 25 chance, I believe. So one over five times one over five, if my statistics is correct. Thank you very much to Aster105 who opened the pack and I selected the ditto from it. You do have the chance to send a friend request to the person whose wonder pick you collected. And that brings us to level three. We now have the ability to battle. I'm gonna do that in another episode if you guys do like the Pokemon Pocket, but you also get new deck bonuses. Let's go check those out. In the first 15 minutes, you will get a ton of points that allow you to open up more packs uh, just through leveling and completing the beginner level challenges. Beginner level challenges are meant to make you want to open up a ton of packs really early on so that once you go through the process of opening one pack a day, it just won't feel good enough. Just be aware that everything they're doing is meant to make you want to open up more packs. So if you're someone who's very addictive to games like these, like Pokemon Go or anything else where you end up spending more money, just be very conscious of this and, and make sure you don't go overboard. You can get away with just opening one pack a day. There's nothing wrong with that. Let's take a look at the premium challenges. They're all pretty simple, just opening certain card types, fighting psychic, as you can see here. A, a lot of the time, the challenges are really just based off of, you know, you open more packs, you're more likely to beat the challenges. 
I, I think that's one thing they're going to have to figure out. I, I, I just don't see how I'd want to get the challenges. There's nothing really challenging about them. I suppose that is the nature of collecting. It's just that, you know, when you're collecting digital cards, it's it's a little bit different. You almost need to add a game within the game itself, you know. They need to find a way to make these more, not just collectible, but playable. All right, let's open up another pack. We have the Graveler. Come on, flip it over there, big guy. Caterpie. Sand Slash. Get a Wigglytuff. And we get a Snom. But wait for my next pack. I will be opening up more and I get a, an absolute banger. I'm so excited for you guys to see this here. So I use more of my hourglasses because I accumulated a ton in the first 10 minutes. Some of which might have come from my premium. I'm not entirely sure, but I'm pretty sure most of them just came from leveling. Clogopus, we get the Squirtle. Guys, it's coming. Woobat, Dodrio, and we get the Pikachu EX. Three gold stars. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you guys watch this. I think this is really incredible. This is actually really cool. Honestly, I was really impressed with the art. The artist added such immersion to the card to the point where it made me think, oh wow, what could a Pokemon mainline game look like with this kind of art style? It was also the first time in the 15 minutes where my jaw dropped, I think, you know, where I, I felt impressed with the product that uh, Pokemon put out. I still don't think it had me fist pumping or screaming like I would when I'm opening TCG cards. I think a big part of it is that, you know, the supply and demand creates this value for the card unlike anything Pokemon Pocket could recreate. It's also really difficult to associate this to a particular experience. When I'm holding the card, I remember exactly where I was, the smell and everything. You don't get that with Pokemon Pocket. All right. We're going to end it off here. If you guys like this video, remember to like it, subscribe. I'm going to show you quickly what you could do with some of the premium points. You could get some promo cards, some accessories. I'm going to buy this promo card. Why not? It was free to get the premium pass. Remember, check it out and remember to remove it if you don't want to pay $15 after the deadline. Take care, guys. Let me know what you think of Pokemon Pocket and have a great day.